total information news from WBAP Fort Worth. Norwood McClendon reporting. President Kennedy drew prolonged applause in Fort Worth this morning when he said this country next month will fire the largest rocket booster in the world, putting us ahead of the Soviet Union in space. Later, President Kennedy told a Fort Worth breakfast audience that Texas ranks fifth among the states in prime military contract spending. He also spoke well of the TFX fighter plane contracted to General Dynamics Fort Worth. From Fort Worth, the President and Mrs. Kennedy and their party go to Dallas, where the Chief Executive addresses a luncheon gathering. Tonight, they'll be in Austin. The Kennedys will meet the people again in the downtown Fort Worth, back to Carswell Motorcade, as they proceed up Main to Belknap, west to Jacksboro Highway, then to River Oaks Boulevard, and on to the air base. The party is scheduled to leave for Dallas at 11.15. Your straight line to reliable reporting, WBAP Fort Worth, where the news comes first. A big city has been told to be on its good behavior today, and we're it. From Dallas Love Field, the Dallas-Fort Worth area broadcasters bring you a special description of the arrival of President John F. Kennedy. At this moment, three special jetliners are supposed to be in the air between Dallas and Fort Worth. They were scheduled to take off a few moments ago from Carswell Air Force Base in Fort Worth for the brief flight to Dallas. Mr. and Mrs. Kennedy and their official party began their Texas tour yesterday morning when they departed Washington. From there, they have visited Houston, San Antonio, then on to Fort Worth, where they spent last night. If time allows, we'll bring you up to date on their stops at uh, those three previous points. But right now... The eyes of Texas and the nation are focused on Dallas. The president's car is being delayed momentarily. We can't see from here exactly what is holding it up. He, uh, yes, we can, too. He has now decided to shake hands with one or two more people, and that is the cause for the delay. But this is the moment where the Secret Service has its point of tension. As we have talked with many of these Secret Service men in the past few days who have arranged for the President's security, they say when the President stops moving, that's when we're concerned, because that is when the possibility of trouble comes to the forefront. And here comes the President now. In fact, he's not in his limousine. He's departed the limousine, and he is walking. He is reaching across the fence, shaking hands, shaking hands with many of the people who have come here to see him. He is closely accompanied by Dallas police officers and, of course, the Secret Service. But Mr. Kennedy stepped out of the automobile. He is now shaking hands. Mrs. Kennedy is right behind him, and they are walking along the line of the fence, shaking hands with some of the hundreds of people who have come here to view their arrival. Now, this is a distinct departure from the plan that had been set forth many, many days ago. And now here's Mrs. Uh, Lyndon Johnson. She also is going along. So is the vice president. They're making their way along the line of the fence and uh, still are not in the official limousine. The only members of the official party in the presidential limousine who didn't depart are Governor and Mrs. Connolly. They have stayed in the limousine. But the president, the first lady, the vice president, and Mrs. Lyndon Johnson all are walking along the edge of this fence, shaking hands with the crowd. And they are being greeted by placards of varying emotion and uh, political feeling. Those saying, we're with you all the way, JFK, and those saying, help JFK stamp out democracy. So he is seeing Dallas County politics at the height of a very boiling moment in Dallas political history. Thousands of children now swarming, trying to get over the fence. The Dallas police trying to keep them back. And the security is tense at this time, but is going beautifully. Vice President and Mrs. Johnson are, oh, some 25 to 30 feet behind the President and the First Lady in the handshaking tour, the unofficial, unscheduled handshaking tour. And now the President and First Lady are retreating from the fence. They're heading now for the official limousine where Governor Connolly stands waiting their arrival so that they can make their way downtown and out to the trademark. But this was one of those impromptu moments for which President Kennedy is so well known so many times 
You have heard that the Secret Service men suddenly find themselves without the president, that suddenly he has left them and stepped into the crowd, the milling throng, and decided to shake hands and give his personal greetings. And this, once again, he did. So you could say perhaps that this is more the norm now than the unexpected because it has been done so many times. And there's the gunmetal gray limousine, blue and gray, pulling away now from the fenced area. The president and Mrs. Kennedy seated on the back seat, Governor and Mrs. Connolly on the second seats or jump seats, and then the official driver and Secret Service men are in the front seat, and uh, immediately behind them, another car swarming with the Secret Service. car making its way through the rain puddles left by this early morning rain, and all of the other vehicles in the official motorcade are now falling into line, and the trip to downtown Dallas and the Trade Mart is underway. Another group of spectators lining a parking lot area. The presidential car has slowed down so that they may see and that he may wave to them, but now the motorcycle escort, a flying wedge of some uh, one dozen Dallas police motorcycles leading the way, and uh, the pace is picking up as they head for the departure gate and the trip downtown to the Trade Mart. This has been a special broadcast of the arrival of the official presidential party. President and Mrs. Kennedy, Vice President and Mrs. Lyndon Johnson, and other members of the official party, as they arrive in Dallas today, where they will attend the luncheon and the president will make an address. They will depart here at 2.30 for Bergstrom Air Force Base at Austin, then there will be overnight guests at the LBJ Ranch, and then they will... Unofficially, our schedule says they will depart at noon tomorrow for Washington. So the party is now leaving Dallas Love Field, and the spectators are scrambling. It looks like bargain day right after Christmas, as thousands of people dash madly to get another view of the president as he and his first lady depart Love Field. The special broadcast, a full effort on the part of the Dallas-Fort Worth area broadcasters. We have been speaking from atop a huge broadcasting van where we hope we've given you somewhat of a word picture of what has occurred here today. And now we return you to your local studios from Dallas Love Field. The speech of President Kennedy at the Dallas Trademark will be broadcast by 570 Radio. Stay tuned for the President's Dallas speech at the Trademark on 570 Radio. This is WBAP 570 Fort Worth. Our time now, six minutes before 12 noon. A new date set for disarmament negotiations. The 17 nations taking part in the disarmament discussions have decided to try again in Geneva beginning January 21st. President Kennedy keeping a date. He's now in Dallas, Texas. That's an area where there are a lot of supporters of Arizona conservative Republican Senator Barry Goldwater. Mr. Kennedy expected to take a few pot shots at Senator Goldwater's stand that American field commanders be given authority to use nuclear weapons. Earlier today in Fort Worth, the president spoke to a breakfast meeting of the Chamber of Commerce. He praised the military hardware that Texas plants turn out. And then ABC microphones picked up this reference to a new plane to be built by General Dynamics in Fort Worth. There's been a good deal of discussion of the long and hard fought competition to win the TFX contract. There's very little discussion about what this plane will do. Then the president went on to praise the TFX as a plane that will serve all our military forces and give the free world an aircraft no other on earth can match. Mr. Kennedy made no reference to the congressional hassle over the award of the contract to General Dynamics instead of Boeing Aircraft's cheaper version. One man who won't be in Dallas when the president arrives, former President, uh, Vice President Richard Nixon. Nixon there on a business trip he left this morning. Nixon said he thinks the 64 Democratic ticket may dump Vice President Johnson if the going gets rough. There's another bit of hoopla going on in Texas today. In Uvalde, John Nance Garner is celebrating his 95th birthday. Texas Jack was vice president during FDR's first two terms. A little while ago, ABC telephoned the Garner Ranch. We talked with a member of the Garner household, Ray Scott. We asked Scott about Mr. Garner. He's pretty happy. He's having a good time. The president just called, and he's welcomed him to Texas. They talked about two or three minutes, and he had about 100 people come to see him. And the band was out 
out in the front yard playing high school band. And he's in happy spirits, has a big cake and everything. People bringing him presents. And our best wishes to John Nance Garner. That Alabama grand jury coming to Washington will get a chance to look around the Justice Department, but neither Attorney General Kennedy nor any other department official will appear for questioning. The Alabama jury is attempting to question the Justice Department about the use of an automobile to take the Reverend Martin Luther King to a civil rights rally. This is Bob Upker again at Main and Ackerd in downtown Dallas. And the first red lights are now visible coming uh, far down the street, uh, just having now turned right hand uh, onto Main off of Harwood. And the uh, large uh, police escort is now ahead of the presidential uh, motorcade. Buses are pulled over to the side of the street and the crowd is surging forward to uh, close in somewhat on the leading cars. There are five, six, seven motorcycles still here in front of the first cars. Uh, and the crowd at our point is surging forward. There's a big cheer going up as the uh, president gets further down. And now the ticker tape uh, and uh, other confetti and such is beginning to flow from the windows uh, all over the uh, large uh, buildings here and uh, engulf the entire uh, motorcade. Here comes the first car with Police Chief Jess Curry and uh, Sheriff Bill Decker. And here is the President of the United States. And what a crowd, uh, what a tremendous welcome he's getting now. We can, uh, and there's Jackie. She's getting just as big a welcome. And the crowd is absolutely going wild. This is a friendly crowd in downtown Dallas as the President and the First Lady pass by. There is Linda Johnson and Lady Bird passing by in the second car behind Moore. And here come the congressmen in their automobiles. And there comes the press. They're shooting the entire crowd as they move along here. Here is KRLD's cameraman Jim Underwood along with others and more press people coming by. As we can see, the presidential limousine even further down the street. It's a tremendous welcome, not a placard in downtown Dallas. And here comes the White House press. Uh, the big chartered uh, bus is now arriving. And uh, more limousines, the entire motorcade is now being, as we can see the rear of it, it's uh, the crowd closing in behind the motorcade. And up ahead of the motorcade, far down uh, the street towards Simmons Freeway, we can see the crowd is absolutely going wild and there's more ticker tape falling out of the, the windows. There are people absolutely uh, looking from every window here in downtown Dallas. And it was a wonderful welcome as the President and Jacqueline Kennedy uh, passed our point at uh, Main and Ackerd. The latter part of the motorcade has just passed and now the entire Main Street is completely filled from building to building with people and they're following the motorcade uh, down towards Dillon Freeway. The people really enjoyed that one glimpse of the President of the United States and Jacqueline Kennedy. They're going further down and just about now, as we can see, far, far down uh, Main Street towards Simmons Freeway. The motorcade is just about to reach the uh, location of the county courthouse. And the people are still running down Main Street following the presidential motorcade. The enthusiastic welcome that uh, broke loose here at Main and Akron has followed the President all the way through and thousands and thousands of people who were crowding the streets here are following the motorcade even further down uh, Main Street towards Simmons Freeway. It uh, was a wonderful welcome for President Kennedy and Mrs. Kennedy. There was uh, certainly uh, no adverse demonstration. It was a tremendous welcome that Big D gave our chief executive. The presidential motorcade is now just uh, far, far, uh, out, almost out of our sight, and the only thing still visible above the heads of uh, thousands upon thousands of people who are still following the motorcade down Main Street towards Simmons Freeway, just the very top of the big buses carrying the official party and the congressman as well as the White House press. It was a tremendous welcome here in Main and Ackerd and all along Main Street in downtown Dallas. And now gradually the crowd is uh, beginning to thin out at our location and uh, we can see a little bit of traffic beginning to move uh, far down to the east on Main Street. And those who are following the presidential caravan are just about out of sight now too and most of the crowd at our point are going back to their respective jobs and wherever they have to be on this particular afternoon. This is the nation station, WLW, in Cincinnati, your clear channel service. Eastern Standard Time, 1.30. 
NBC Radio News on the Hour, brought to you by Wind's friction-proving products to correct and prevent car trouble from radiator to gas tank. Now here is Martin Nagronsky, NBC News. President Kennedy denounced critics of his foreign policy today as prone to confuse rhetoric with reality. On the second day of his Texas tour, the president used a Dallas speech to contend that those who advance seemingly swift and simple solutions to every world problem will end in endangering the nation's security. Though the president didn't mention Arizona Senator Barry Goldwater by name, there was no doubt his remarks were aimed at the man who is now regarded as the front-runner for the Republican presidential nomination. Acting Commerce Secretary Franklin D. Roosevelt, Jr. has testified to the Senate Banking Committee that the U.S. will have to hurry its decision on selling surplus wheat to the Soviet Union as the Russians have now set a May 21st deadline for beginning shipments. Roosevelt argued against the proposal of South Dakota Senator Mutt to bar government-sponsored credit for wheat purchases by any communist nation. He contended this restriction would bar U.S. businessmen from getting a fair chance to win a part of Russia's annual $4 billion of trade with the free world. At the United Nations in New York, the 17 member states of the presently postponed Geneva Disarmament Conference voted to resume negotiations at Geneva next January 21st. And more news after this from Winds of Friction Proofing. Carefree driving begins with a can of wind and a can of wind today. Did it happen this morning? Did you step on the gas and finally realize that the pep and zing your car used to have is gone? Sort of takes the joy out of driving, doesn't it? Well, there's a very good answer to your problem. It's called Winds Friction Proofing. Winds Friction Proofing restores a healthy measure of the pep your car has lost with age. It increases power and gas mileage, makes starting easier on cold mornings. But best of all, Winds Friction Proofing penetrates the surfaces of the moving parts inside your engine. It smooths and seals these parts to hold engine wear to an absolute minimum. Next time you stop for gas or service, add a can of Winds Friction Proofing to your crankcase. Your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. So add a can of winds today. Here again, Martin Nagronsky. A two-day conference between West Germany's Chancellor Erhard and France's President de Gaulle has ended, and a report from NBC's Bernard Frizzell in Paris. West German Chancellor Ludwig Erhard made plain here today the German government's reliance upon the United States for its defense against the threat of Soviet aggression. That was the note on which Earhart wound up his two-day visit here to President de Gaulle. The French were reportedly careful not to present to Earhart a choice between themselves and the United States. But the Germans were said to be astonished at the sharply critical attitude of the French toward American policy. A joint communique called for all necessary efforts to get the common market moving forward again and to increase trade with the United States through the forthcoming Kennedy round of negotiations for tariff reduction. But no concrete agreements were announced. This is Bernard Frizzell, NBC News, Paris. Democratic Senator George McGovern of South Dakota, home state of the Fisher Quintuplets, has a letter from a constituent that he finds hard to answer. The constituent writes that he doesn't mind a bit all the gifts to the Fisher family but that he feels he's being unfairly treated despite his similar circumstances. I've got five children, too, he complains to Senator McGovern, and just because mine came one at a time, no one has given me a cent. Michigan's Governor George Romney insisted today at the Midwest Governor's Conference in Omaha that he is not seeking the Republican presidential nomination next year. This is Martin Agronsky, NBC News, Washington. When your child is sick with a cold or flu, Remember what doctors recommend. Bed rest, plenty of fluids, and aspirin to reduce fever and relieve pains. When you give orange-flavored bear aspirin for children, your child will feel better fast. And knowing he feels better, so will you. Each tablet is the one and a quarter grain dosage doctors recommend for children. And it gives you such confidence to know you're giving the best. So always, orange-flavored bear aspirin for children. This has been NBC News on the Hour. Listen again on the Hour for NBC Radio News, brought to you by Bear Aspirin for Children. Emphasis adds to your listening enjoyment weekdays on the NBC Radio Network.
Good afternoon, everyone. It's Friday, November 22nd. Welcome to the Tune Pipe. Fred Bernard and Little Abner here until 3 o'clock. It would appear to be another one of those gray and overcast days with some rain falling around the tri-state area. Cloudy skies to continue with the showers off and on again, that type of day. Be a little windy this afternoon, too, with highs in the upper 60s. While we're at it, we'll get right to the forecast. Present temperature is 58 here in Cincinnati and the relative humidity at 85%. Um, Indianapolis has rain in 58. Dayton has rain, 65 there. Columbus, 65. Louisville, 68. Lexington, 69. Huntington, 69 degrees, and they're all reporting cloudy skies. Leading edge of the rain is showing on the radar from near Toledo to Dayton to Andersonville, Indiana, to mid- midway between Louisville and Evansville. Now you have it all in your mind. This place is the eastern edge about 40 miles west of Cincinnati. The rain is spreading eastward 15 to 20 miles an hour. We may have a few sprinkles in advance of the main rain area, which falls mainly on the plain, but that's next week. This week, Little Abner. WLW is the only station permitted by the Federal Communications Commission to broadcast on 700 kilocycles in this country by international agreement. It's the responsibility of WLW to provide service to many thousands of people who live either in rural communities or on farms or in towns not large enough to support its own local radio station. For many years now, WLW has attempted to meet its responsibilities and obligations to provide this service. It's... Management, farm department, and staff earnestly solicit your suggestions as to how our service might be improved, either in the field of entertainment, news, or information that's important to you. Your comments and suggestions will certainly be appreciated. They'll receive the careful and thoughtful consideration of all of us here at the nation's station. We ask that you address them to Steve Crane, General Manager, WLW in Cincinnati, Ohio. Now to Dog Patch USA, and before we get the proceedings underway... We'll have to stand by here just a moment. There may be something happening. Yes, there is. There's a bulletin just handed me from Dallas, Texas. An unknown sniper fired three shots at President Kennedy. This is uh, in connection with President Kennedy, who is now touring Texas, as you know. Uh, I'll tell you exactly how this reads. Dallas... An unknown sniper fired three shots at, and then there are five letters, P-M-O-U-X, then a flash, Kennedy's name is misspelled, flash again, and at the bottom of this headline it says, Kennedy seriously wounded. We will, of course, be awaiting further details on this story, so please stand by. This report just in from Dallas, Texas, an unknown sniper firing three shots, evidently at the presidential party while they were touring Texas, the bottom of this, it says, Mr. Kennedy has been seriously wounded. We will, of course, bring you details as they are received. 